We're going full tabletop immortality here with God tier, drinking the salty tears of the gods, questing with our war bands. It's there. And we've been exploring Tactica, building a playlist of points to keep in mind about the unique mechanics of this game, because certainly the miniatures look fantastic. Certainly the missions are a lot of fun to play. But Fritz, it's just another skirmish game. You've got your war bands, you've got your champions, you fight it out. Yes. I mean, it helps that the models look fantastic and the lore really pulls you in on a very tabletop level. But the game has also been built from the ground up. And this is one of the things that I explored in my Tactica vlog from, I think, about last week. I pushed that up and others to my channel here under the God Tier playlist. This idea that this is a new game developed from the ground up. It's not just about killing models. There are multiple ways to to win. There are multiple objectives. There are multiple missions. And a, a unique feature that is found in the game, the champions are never removed. They're never killed. The followers get killed, but you can recruit them back. So you can never be effectively alpha striked through some cheesy meta list, or if you have a bad turn, you're wiped out. A, a lot of the deficiencies of legacy skirmish games and war games have been well thought out and completely upended. So it's a very, very tactical game. One of the layers is understanding buffing and removing attributes. And I'm, I'm using terminology outside of the game because if you're new to God tier, capturing these principles and understanding these principles is much easier without using in-game turns. And if you're an enthusiast of God tier, then this is something to remind us. So like any skirmish war game, you roll some dice to make something happen. I have a champion. The champion wants to attack. Maybe it's a ranged attack. Maybe it's a close attack. It has an attack value, a number of attack dice. I roll those dice and I count up my successes, zero, one, or two. That has to be the number on the target, whether it's a champion or a follower. So this is kind of the framework. Uh, there's an agility value. If I'm able to bypass that agility, I hit. Then I roll dice to see how much damage I do. You subtract that damage from armor. And then you take wounds. If it's a follower, it's removed. Usually they just have one wound. Or if it's a champion, um, they take a number of wounds. When they've reached zero, they're not killed. They're knocked out. You, you can't kill a half god. You can't kill someone that has tasted the literal tears, the god tears. And that's one of the great ways that they take this mechanic. And you're like, wait, how does that make sense? Well, they're infused with this magical essence. So when they get killed, they're knocked out. Now you have to spend a turn, an action, I should say, to revive them. So it's not like I was knocked out and there's no uh, consequence to it. There, there is, because you have X number of actions per turn. You get knocked out or you want to recruit. You got to burn at least one to come back. So there is some, some give and take. But what we see, and we, we do see this in other war games, dice-based games, is the idea that you have dice that have to accomplish something, and you roll these dice pools that need to break through certain factors to accomplish it. Now, it depends on the piece. Obviously, if I have a character, um, the red characters are slayers. They're focused. They do a lot of different things, but their focus is fighting. They're going to roll more attack dice, generally, as opposed to a, a green-colored warband, which is more support. They have attack, but maybe it's not as powerful or it's specialized. So certainly you're going to look and say, if I have a high attack value, can I break through? Do I attack the weaker model? Or if I'm attacking a model with great defense, maybe I need uh, two champions attacking. You, you are looking to build your dice pool. But what's important with God tier is influencing the dice. I was going to say manipulating the dice, but that, that's like some sort of tricknology, sleight of hand type thing. No, being able to affect and change the dice. What this is, the champions, the followers, they can buff or they can decrease based on abilities. And, and the abilities have a narrative, but they say, you know, take this ability. And if you hit the target, so make an attack, you have to be in range. You have to do the agility. If you hit the target, then next time that target is attacked, it has one less armor value or it has a reduction in mobility or it changes some aspect. Now, this... Decrease is not permanent. You only have one shot for it, and then it's reset. So you see these champions and you see these followers that, that 
positioning is so important in the game because now you can get off these crazy combos where if I have someone that's like super fast and super deadly, if I can hit them, bring down their armor value and bring down their movement speed, that changes everything. Now it's only one turn, so I got to utilize it. And at the same time, nothing is free because each champion and each group of followers economy of action. I don't have like 10 actions, so I can't be like, okay, attack here, move here, plant a flag here, take the banner, crush the banner, do the buff, do the bane. Like, no, you, you have to, you've got your two. You've got to decide what you're going to do. And then, of course, all the puzzles have to fit together and you have to be in the right place at the right time. Now, at the same time, you can look and say, do I want to juice up? Do I want to go all bane? So certain war bands, certain champions, certain followers can hand out bonuses, increase armor, increase agility, increase attack dice. This gives you an idea where if you're already playing a monster, going to transform them even more. Or if you find where you're playing a, it's a great way also to, to increase your efficiency, but also cover up your mistakes, cover up your tabletop mistakes. So an example, um, I love to play shale. All the characters are so unique. Shale is this kind of necromancer, wizard, shaper dude who is is literally on a floating rock, and he has a construct landslide made out of god tears. So kind of like this stone robot, and, and he controls it. Got some interesting abilities, but Shale is mostly support. Most war games, if I can play a wizard, it's like a D&D thing. I'm always playing a wizard. I love magic on the table, whether it's elf magic, space magic, whatever it's going to be. So... If you catch, if I play shale incorrectly, or you can catch me through tactical maneuvering where you attack him with a slayer, I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble. I could take that hit, but it's going to hurt. And if I get knocked out, then I'm losing out my economy because I have to spend an action to to get back up. So maybe if I'm playing another warband this turn, I got to throw some buffs on my man. I got to throw up some armor. Or maybe I got to throw up some agility and and some movement, excuse me, and get out of there. So these options, not only in the moment of like trying to add some extra dice against your opponent, you can also use it to protect yourself. But ultimately, given the action point economy, you have a lot of options in God tier. They're not overwhelming. They're very well done. They're very tactical. But they are options because you need to make that choice. You need to decide and say, what am I doing this turn? You decide, you roll the dice, you own it, you see the outcome. So this is another level that before you dive into the synergy of the different warbands, to understand a central point of the game, a central component is handing out pluses and handing out minuses and within the rule set, being able to manipulate the dice through change. 